Hey guys, welcome to Will's World. I'm Will, and today we're going to be looking at macro photography. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. One is you can get a nice expensive macro lens, which is normally $1,000 or more, that's designed to get real up close and focus real close to the object. Or you can get an extension tube, which basically you attach to your lens and it allows you to focus much closer. And these are normally between $50 to $100, depending on whether or not it has contacts for things like autofocus or for aperture setting. But what I did, I went even cheaper than that. I went online and found a model of an extension tube, and I was able to 3D print it at home. And now I can do macro photography for basically nothing. So stay tuned as I walk you through the process of macro photography and see how it works with different lenses. All right, so what does an extension tube do? Well, to understand it, basically, we need to quickly look at what a lens does. Very top level, what a lens does is it focuses light onto a point. Simple as that. So for the picture to be in focus, the point where the light is focused, where the light rays converge to one point, needs to be on the sensor. And your lens has a minimum focusing length. And so what that means is as you get closer to an object, that point of the light converging to be a nice crisp picture starts to move back relative to the sensor. And what an extension tube will do is bring the sensor back to the point while keeping the lens up here. So it sort of effectively allows you to move the, uh, the lens closer to the object that you want to take a picture of. And what that will allow you to do is get closer and make the object bigger relative to what it was before. So what sort of length extension tube should you have? Well, it kind of depends on what you want to do. If you want to get a really close up shot of something and make it really big, you need a longer extension tube. But if you just want to get a little bit closer than what your lens would currently allow, a shorter extension tube would work great for you. Now, oftentimes, if you're looking for these online to buy, you'll see them sold in sets of three with a short, a medium, and a long uh, length extension tube. And you can use them individually, or you can combine all three of them together to get even closer. So if you really don't know where you want to go with this, that would be a great way to start because you can play around with the different lengths. All right, so my extension tube is 50 millimeters long. I'm going to go ahead and pair it with a couple different lenses, the 24 to 105 and the 70 to 200 millimeter length lens. I'm going to see how it works at different focal lengths, see how closely you can focus, see how uh, magnified it is. So I'm going to get a little scientific on you, but I hope it's interesting to you. I hope you find it informative and I hope you like watching this video. So let's go ahead and get started and see how it works. Okay, so putting the extension tube on is pretty straightforward. You just take off your lens and then you put your extension tube on the camera and then you put the lens on the extension tube, tighten it down, now you're good to go. Um, now the one problem with automatic lenses is that they don't have the manual aperture ring and because this is a 3D printed extension tube and the cheaper extension tubes will be like this as well where that they don't have the electrical contacts for the camera body to speak to the lens so that means you cannot change the aperture of the lens with the extension tube on, at least an extension tube like this so what do you do? You want to be able to have a high f-stop so your aperture is nice and closed down so you can get more things in focus because as you get closer of course your depth of field diminishes. So what you can do is put your lens back on your camera and kind of cheat a little bit. Um, basically you turn on your camera and you set it to a high f-stop value so say F9. I'm going to choose F9 and if I hold the depth of field button it'll close the aperture blades down and if I take the lens off the camera it will remain uh, with that aperture set. So now I can put this on and instead of having the standard F4, the wide open aperture, I will now have an F9 aperture which will allow me to get more depth of field which is very important on a macro shot. So now with this set, let's go ahead and see how well it works. So this is the setup. As you can see, the camera is mounted on a tripod. 
with the extension tube and the lens attached. Um, and then to basically get a picture to show it, uh, to show how close you can get, I have a Taiwanese thousand dollar bill uh, standing vertically in a GoPro mount that I made. And I'm in Taiwan, that's why it's, I'm using Taiwanese currency. And then after I get that in focus, I will then measure what the distance is from the edge of the lens to the uh, dollar bill. And then after that, I will take a picture of the um, measuring tape in focus to see how wide of a, of a view I get at that extreme uh, point. And then I can compare that to the sensor size to get the magnification ratio. So now, let's go over the results. I started out testing the 24 to 105 f4 lens without the extension tubes at both 24 millimeters and at 105 millimeters, just to set a baseline. I focused as closely as I could at both these lengths. You can see the results at 24 millimeters here. Obviously, not much magnification to speak of. At 105 millimeters, you get a magnification ratio of 0.24. It's okay, but not great. I was originally hoping to show macro shots throughout the focal range, but below 50 millimeters, the focus point is inside the lens, so I could not get a clear image no matter what. At 50 millimeters and at infinity focus, I was able to focus at 2 centimeters or just under 1 inch in front of the lens, which gave a magnification ratio of 1.0, which is pretty good. At 70 millimeters, it was still too close to the lens to have a sharp image at near focus distance. But at infinity focus, I could get it focused at 6 centimeters or just under 6.5 inches distance for a magnification ratio of 0.69. Definitely more usable. At 105 millimeters and at infinity focus, the bill was 20.5 centimeters or 8 inches away from the lens with a magnification ratio of 0.46. At this focal length, I could finally focus at the near focus point on the lens from 2.5 centimeters or 1 inch away. This gave a magnification ratio of 0.96. Moving on to the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Again, first without this extension tube at 70 millimeters, I could focus at 96 centimeters or just under 38 inches in front of the lens with a magnification ratio of 0.08. At 200 millimeters, I focus at 98 centimeters or 38 and a half inches for a magnification ratio of 0.21. Fairly similar results to the 24 to 105 magnification ratios without the extension tube. At 70 millimeters, I could focus at 8.5 centimeters of weight or just over 3 inches for a magnification ratio of 0.69. And at 200 millimeters at near focus, I could focus at 52 centimeters or 20 and a half inches, giving a magnification ratio of 0.49. I was going to do a chart for both lenses, but the 24105 had so few usable points that the chart was really pretty useless. So there's only a chart for the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Hopefully, this won't be too confusing. Basically, the darker colors are the distance it can focus at throughout the focal length, and the lighter colors are the magnification ratio. Green is without the extension tube for a point of reference. The blue lines are the results at near focus, and orange is at infinity focus. So you can see that with the extension tube, it allows you to significantly focus close at a closer distance and at a much higher magnification ratio. In this one, I have the focus distance range at each focal length colored and to make it easier to see. Basically, you can look at it and say, at 200 millimeters with a 50 millimeter extension tube, I can focus between roughly 50 and 100 centimeters. Any closer or further, and it won't be able to focus. In the next image is the magnification ratio range colored in. Similarly, it allows you to look at it and say at 200 millimeters, I can get a ratio between 0.24 and 0.49 magnification. Finally, here are some real world examples that help show what you can do with an extension tube. As you can see, you can get some pretty close shots and really see some things that you can't see with your naked eye. You can also see that the depth of field is really shallow. So to combat that, what you can do is focus stacking. If you want to see a video on that, subscribe to my channel, and I'll do that soon. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it somewhat interesting. 
If you did, hit that like button and leave a comment below. It really helps me out a lot. And if you're interested in getting into macro photography and have a 3D printer, there's a link to the model of the extension tube below. Otherwise, I'll also have extension tubes that you can purchase for your camera. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so you know when more videos come out. And thanks for watching.